Hi everybody. Today I am going to discuss about equation of motion of a single degree of freedom system. A single degree of freedom system is the simplest possible mathematical model in structural dynamics. Here I have taken an analytical model of single degree of freedom system. Why it is single degree of freedom system? Because it is only required to monitor a single quantity and it is the movement of the mass m to completely describe the vibration of the system and this model it has some elements a mass element m representing the mass and inertia characteristics of the structure the mass inertia element stores the kinetic energy a spring element k representing the elastic restoring force and potential energy storage of the structure a damping element or dashboard c representing the frictional characteristics and energy dissipation of the structure fourth one an excitation force ft representing the external forces but make sure it must be time varying force acting on the structure system xt denotes the displacement of mass m from its original position of rest now here we see there are two terms fs and fd fs it represent the elastic restoring force and fd it is the force developed in the damper now here let us consider the development of a mathematical model for a lateral load analysis of a simple portal frame here two columns and the slab basically this line represents slab and beam and these two line represents the column since the mass of the column is very small in comparison with that of this slab so it is reasonable to assume that the entire mass of the portal is concentrated at the slab level since the entire mass is concentrated at this slab level so the inertial effect in the model can be completely determined from the knowledge of the motion of the slab very important point to understand also if we consider that the axial rigidity of the beam and slab as i told this line represent beam and slab so if we consider that the axial rigidity of the beam and slab is very large in comparison with the stiffness of the column in the lateral deformation so it will be a good approximation to assume that beam and slab i mean this line is infinitely rigid and entire lateral deformation is due to the 
flexural deformation of the column. I think it's very clear. So let's move in the next slide to understand more of these portal frames. As I said, the entire mass of this lab is assumed as being a discrete lamp concentrated at the roof level. We can see it here. So half of the column mass, I mean this column, this column, half of the column mass, I mean top part, are considered as being lumped at the roof level. And the balance half at foundation level. So we can say that the total mass at roof level, which is lumped as M, but columns are treated as a massless spring. This column and this column are treated as a massless in, uh, I mean spring, providing the lateral stiffness and possessing an infinite vertical stiffness. And the most striking feature of any vibrating body, it is the effect of inertia, which comes into play by virtue of Newton's second law of motion, which states that the rate of change of momentum of any body in motion is equal to the external forces acting on it and that is this one here ft it is the external force act applied on the body but to be sure with it is time varying m denotes the mass but it is a measure of inertia. V represents the instantaneous velocity of the body. Now, lateral dynamic force. As we can see here, it is a time variant Ft represented as ft at roof level and it causes translation at the roof level in the direction of ft and we can see here it is xt to analyze such a mathematical model we need to link its dynamic displacement to the excitation force and this is achieved through the equation of motion so at any instance of time such displacement xt it is resisted by of course by a force but that force how it comes it comes due to damping FD and bilateral stiffness of the frame, which in turn gives us a resulting net force. It means it will be FT minus FD minus FS. Let's write it. This is the thing. Now, already we wrote here Newton's second law of motion. 
so as per newton's second law of motion for linear system a body acted upon by a force moves such that time rate of change of its linear momentum is equal to net force applied so easily we can write this net force causes the change in momentum of the mass in accordance with newton's second law how it will come as this so this brought it here because the net force causes the change in momentum of the because this is net force cause the change in momentum of the mass in accordance with newton's second law now let's move in the next slides also we have to simplify the interpretations of newton's second law of motion which is popularly known as Alembert's principles. So how to simplify interpretations of the second law? As I said, we have to apply Alembert's principle of dynamic equilibrium. Actually, what it says, it states that a mass subjected to an acceleration produces an inertia opposing force proportional to its acceleration. So inertia opposing force. inertia force it is equal to mass into acceleration so the inertia force is proportional to the acceleration so we can write our equations f inertia equal to this because mass into acceleration we have to transfer it so let's write inertia for we know we have to write about the second two terms say the resistance fs against lateral storage displacement x actually the lateral stiffness of column lateral stiffness of this column it provides resistance fs against lateral story displacement x here we can see that thus it represents a linear spring f force fs equal to kx again damping force fd damping force fd opposing the motion is assumed to act at roof level we can see it here and is taken to be proportional to the velocity of the motion of the structures and damping force fd equal to c and this is velocity so we got fs in terms of velocity we got fd in terms of the displacement we got this f inner in terms of mass into acceleration surely we can write this equation as say we are writing rearranging this putting all the term in the left hand side and right hand side is fd so what you can write whole equation as f inner means f x double dot this is acceleration c x single dot this is velocity 
and k into x this is displacement and this is external force so we got the equation of motion of a single degree of freedom now let's move to write it properly this equation and what all the terms means so this is our equation equation of motion of a single degree of freedom system now this mx double dot what it is inertia force what about the second term damping force what about the third terms restoring force lateral dynamic force ft so totally we can say it as an equation of motion for a single degree of freedom system under a lateral load ft so it is an equation of dynamic equilibrium so i think we are done for the equations equations of motions for a single degree of freedom system under lateral load ft Thanks for watching.